On this third and final episode of Exploiting the Virtual Android Phone, we're going to learn how to bypass security features on buggy Android apps. In case you haven't seen the first two videos in this series, I would recommend that you first go back and watch those. In the first two videos, we learned how to set up Android Studio and how to use it to create a virtual Android device on your computer. We then learned about a purposefully exploitable app called Diva and how to hack the app using software such as ADB or Jotx. All of the skills and tools that were covered in the last two episodes will still be essential here. Even though we're mostly going to be using the tools that we're familiar with, I will show you guys one more program that can be very useful for finding bugs in Android apps, APK Tool. APK Tool is actually very similar to Jotx, which we used extensively in the last episode, except it doesn't have a GUI, but rather it dumps all the converted Java classes onto your computer. As we'll see in the demonstration, this can sometimes make it easier to programmatically search through the code and find exactly what you're looking for. We will learn about a few different types of exploiting techniques in this video. SQL command injection, hijacking the permissions of the app, and again, finding hard-coded issues in the code. These are all essential skills if you want to begin to learn about how to find bug bounties. In order to follow the tutorial, all you will need is Android Studio with Diva installed onto the virtual device. You will also need the Jotic software that we learned about in the last episode. After that, we can get started. Okay, so like I was just saying, I'm going to show you guys an alternative tool to Jotix that can um, reverse engineer .apk files and allow us to look at the Java source code to better understand what goes into making the app and maybe discover any exploits. So last week we covered Jotix, which has a nice GUI and was very great for like allowing us to discover hard coding issues. It's gonna cover a lot of the ground that you're gonna wanna do when reverse engineering, but sometimes you just don't want a GUI. And one alternative tool to Jotix is a standard APK reverse engineering tool. But the difference is, is that it's GUI only, where Jotix does have a GUI option and a command line option. So I'm gonna just show you guys how to go ahead and use APK tool. So you can go to their main site and just the install tab, like I just had open, and you can just follow the instructions for whatever operating system you're on. Um, even for Windows, it's pretty straightforward to install. Just make sure you put the right files in the right folders that it asks you to. And if you have the privileges on the computer you're using, it's a pretty straightforward installation. And so once you have it installed and you can verify it's correctly installed by just typing an APK tool into your terminal slash PowerShell or whatever you're using, um, and then it should come up with the help menu. So once we have APK tool, we can actually go ahead and reverse engineer a certain APK file. And of course, for this instance, I'm going to be reverse engineering the Diva APK file, which I do have in this programs folder. And you can see uh, Diva APK or Diva beta .apk right here. And we can, we're gonna go ahead and use APK tool to get the Java files from this uh, encrypted APK file, which is just a package of .dex files. So let's go ahead and clear this. So to do that, just make sure that you're in the same directory as the APK file that you want to reverse engineer. And then we're just going to type an APK tool. And then D with no uh, with no tack, no hyphen. It's just the letter D, space, and then the name of the APK file you want to decode. So diva tack beta dot APK. And then we just have to specify the name of the folder where we want all the outputted files. So we're going to use tack O. And then I'm just going to call it uh, diva source files and it's going to take a second or two and convert all of that into java and various uh, xml files and so now if we do oops if we do an ls not an s we can see diva source files should be here oh there it is i don't know why i can see it but yeah diva source files is there and it, it will have everything hopefully so let's go ahead and open it and yeah we can see there is some kind of file hierarchy uh, that represents the source code. And we can actually go ahead and compare this to the output of Jotix. And we can go ahead and look at Jotix's file hierarchy. And if we go through all this, like if, um, I don't think tree is installed. Oh, yeah, it is tree. If we do a uh, tree here, I forget all the flags. So this is just gonna be showing everything. But this is the exact same hierarchy as the one that Jotix generated. And that's a good thing because it just means that they're decompiling it and reverse engineering it in the same way, except APK tool is always gonna give it to you as the files on the command line, whereas Jotix is gonna be doing it in the GUI. 
and it is nice to sometimes have on the command line in case i don't know you're working uh, you're working remotely so you're like working on a headless system and you only have access to it via the command line having direct access to the files can be nice to like programmatically search through the file hierarchy and find like a certain keyword in all the files it can just be easier for computer code to interact with when you have the files and you can interact with the command line whereas the gui as we showed last time it's nice for just like poking around finding the various connections in the source code and uh, finding any glaring errors because it's in a format that we're used to writing code ourselves in. It's a GUI, it kind of looks like an IDE, so something we're familiar to. Whereas the command line version is better for computer stuff. Now that we've gone through APK tool and we, you guys now know both a GUI option and a command line option for uh, reverse engineering APK files, let's go on and continue and do one or two more of the challenges from the Diva tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring over our virtual device that we've been uh, work that we created with in part one, and we worked with a little bit in part two. And I'm gonna go ahead and open the Diva app. So to do that, like I've been doing, I've been going to this little cog, going to apps notifications, and then I open Diva right here. And we're greeted with this familiar menu. The last couple episodes we've done one, two, and three, but I'm gonna jump around a little bit because a lot of these are pretty samey. So let's go ahead and jump to something fun which is access control uh, issues part one, number nine. So the objective here is that we are supposed to access the API credentials or that we are able to access the API credentials when we click the button. Now, try to access the API credentials from outside of the app. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click this button and it's gonna show an API key, it's showing an API username and an API password that are associated with this key. So you may be thinking, what's the point of this? Like, you know, I can go on the app and just, you know, tap this button and I can see all the credentials. But I don't know, maybe in my head, this is representing some kind of functionality that's already hidden behind credentials. So you had to, to put in a password to get onto this app to even be able to press this button. So it's, it's behind a wall somewhere else. And so now what this is really gonna be showing off is ways that we can interact with um, an Android phone without actually using the Android phone. So this is nice if you're able to get remote access to the Android phone Obviously, it's like the issue where we're talking about using a, a headless computer. You're not gonna be able to really use a GUI uh, when you only have remote access to it. So being able to interact with an Android phone, not just looking at its files like we've been doing, but tapping around, opening apps, interacting with those apps is a fundamental skill if you only have network access to an Android phone. So to continue, we're gonna use the Android debug bridge to interact with this phone. So let me go ahead and clear this. So actually, before we do that, we have to take another step back and we're going to have to learn a little bit more about how Android apps and how APK files are actually structured. So I'm going to go ahead to our reverse engineered source code and I'm just going to do an LS on all of them. And this is in the main directory of the source code. And you'll find this Android manifest.xml file. And if you don't find this file, then you know something's wrong because every Android app ever has an Android manifest.xml. It just goes with making an Android app. And what this XML file does is it ties together the various features and classes and um, activities in an app. And it keeps it all in one neat place. So let's go ahead and open this XML file in some kind of nice user interface. Like I could just use cat, but I'm gonna use VS Code and open Android Manifest.xml. So once this XML file is opened, um, go away, updater. If you're not familiar with XML, it's kind of similar to HTML. Like these um, opening and closing brackets will be similar to HTML, but XML is very good for storing things in hierarchies and, and tables and stuff like that. So um, you'll notice that there's all, a lot of different activities and they are correlated to the different Java classes that we saw in the reverse engineered code on the Jodex GUI. So there's one for the hard coding activity, different insecure storage activities. And some of these activities have actions associated with them behind intent filters. And uh, what intent filters do is they restrict actions to only be completed uh, behind certain intents. So some activities will have an action and these actions can only be completed with specific intents, if that makes a little sense. I'm not into Android development, but that's how I understand how they work. The main takeaway is, is that we can use this piece of information, the uh, name of the activity, and we can use this piece of information, which is the name of the action, to interact with apps and the Android phone via the command line. So 
So these two pieces of information are important to know. So once we take note, this android.intent.action.main is just going to actually open the Diva app from the main screen. So to go ahead and prove that, uh, I'm going to open the phone on the right hand side, go to the home screen, and then I'll open a command window. So I'll open this on the right and I'll get that phone over here. I'll pick up the phone. And so to actually use the phone, we're going to use Android Debug Bridge again. But this time we're going to use um, AM, which stands for Activity Manager. And we're just going to tell the Activity Manager to start a certain action. So now we're going to need the uh, name of the activity. So let's go ahead and do that. So first tack N and effectively, we're just going to copy the name of the activity. There is one caveat, which I'm gonna explain right now. So we're going to ahead and copy the name of the activity. What we're actually passing through is the location of the activity file on the phone. Um, so before we've been talking about the, the file hierarchy of the Android phone, how all the apps are located in data slash data, and all the files associated with the Diva app are located in a folder called the jacar.sm.diva. And so we're just going to want to respect the uh, file nature by adding a forward slash in front of the dot main activity because this is a hidden uh, this is a hidden file in, in this folder. And then after the tag N, we're gonna add a tag A for action. And we're going to copy the name of the action and that shouldn't require any special uh, treatment. And so once we go ahead and do that, uh, we'll go ahead and keep this on the side and I'll press enter. I'll press enter um, and PowerShell won't respond. I'm gonna try to close that. Go ahead and type it again really quick, sorry about that. Oh, my bad. I just realized it's actually ADB shell am sorry i am so sorry about that uh i glossed over that but yeah so once I actually put in the command right so i just forgot that shell right there everything else was correct sorry about that guys it went ahead and opened the app i'll show it off one more time so just by putting in this silly little command from anywhere this could be over a remote network because i'm going to have access to the uh, phone we can go ahead and open the app. So this opens a whole lot of doors, obviously. So we're gonna go ahead back to number nine, access control issues part one. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And so now let's go ahead and focus on any activity with the name access control issues one. And so we can see access control two activity and API creds activity. Access control one and API creds activity. That looks like what we want because there is this action called view credentials, which is, you know, vaguely similar to view API credentials. So let's go ahead with that format we just generated with actually opening the app. Let's go ahead and view the credentials too. So I'm going to just press the up arrow key to bring up the last command. And I'm just gonna go remove this stuff. So adb shell am start tech n. And first we need to copy the name of this activity label. And then we'll be mindful to add the forward slash. And then we're gonna add a tack A, a space. And we're going to copy the name of the action. Oops, I didn't wanna edit the phone. I didn't wanna cut it, I just wanted to copy it. And then I'm gonna bring over the phone on the side right here. And let's see if it works. Hey, look at that. So I didn't even have to touch the phone. I didn't even have to virtually touch the phone, but I was able to see the credentials. And if you go way back in my Novite days, you can see I did something similar to this where from here I would take a screenshot and maybe set up an SMTP server to email that screenshot back to myself. But that is way beyond this. Um, we were, the main demonstration of this was to actually be able to interact with this phone via the command line. So for the last task, I'll show you guys how to complete. Um, we're gonna do a kind of fun one. So we're gonna go to number seven, input validation issues part one. And so I promised you guys I would show off some command injection and uh, spoiler alert, this one is gonna do a little bit of command injection. So let's go ahead and read the objective. Try to access all user data without knowing any of their usernames. There are three users by default and your task is to output all of the data from the three users with a single malicious search. I love that little last sentence. And so if we go ahead and read the, tint, the hint or skim through it, we can see that it is using a database to store all three, obviously. A valid assumption to make is that app developers aren't going to make 
their databases from the ground up because it's a lot of work to make efficient, secure database. So most of the time, people are going to be using some version of SQL or SQL to act as their database. Um, and so we can go ahead and operate under the assumption that the data of these three users is stored in some kind of SQL database. So this one isn't going to require any of the fancy tools we've been using, such as Jotix or APK tool, which I just showed you guys how to install, but instead it's just going to require some knowledge of SQL. So if you know I search a name, I'll search my own name, it's showing that that user wasn't found. There's not really much to go off of there, but we can go ahead and open Logcat to see if this is gonna give us anything interesting. So let's go ahead and open PowerShell. Put it on the, sorry, Windows doesn't want to do that. And okay, so uh, ADB Logcat. Okay, and there's a lot going on. And let's see what happens. Uh, if there's anything interesting here. And okay, I didn't see anything there, but if we're operating under the assumption that it's getting passed in as a SQL query, let's go ahead and put in single quote. Because if they didn't do any uh, filtering, then this will cause a mismatched amount of quotes and it will cause a SQL error. Uh, this is something that's always fun to try. Oh, uh, so let me start up Logcat again, because I did control C it so I could actually freeze the output. Okay, and so yep, I put in a single quote and I verified my assumption that it is uh, using a SQL database because then I put in the single quote and it raised a SQL error that there was a mismatched amount of quotes. So we can exploit the fact, this basically means that uh, it's taking our input and it's passing it through quotes and it's just feeding that directly as a, a SQL query. So if we're somehow able to um, send a query that is always going to return true, then we can get it to return every member of the SQL database. So to do that, we can just do one uh, or one is not equal to uh, two because two like this. So basically what we're saying is uh, that it's true or one does not equal two and is always true that one does not equal two. And you have to be mindful to not put the, the quote in the front or the back uh, because those quotes are gonna be passed in by the way this code is structured. So if I go ahead and press search, everything passes as true and it returns to me the username and the password. It's always fun if you think someone's using a SQL database, and this is probably less true now, uh, but it still might be true in a couple of databases. If you just pass in a single quote, that might be one way to throw off the SQL. And if you know there's a SQL error and you have a way of passing in SQL queries directly, you can always just pass in true and maybe it'll just return you what you wanna see. This will be the last video in the series about exploiting Diva on a virtual device. I hope you're able to learn a lot about the basics of finding bugs in Android apps. There is still so much more to be explored in the world of Android hacking. So let me guys know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this and want to see more. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.